Big shout outs to anyone who took the time to stop by our online store to pick up merch. This is the load from our most recent sale and it's a lot. So thank you guys for the genuine support to our cause and to the brand. The sales we make from our merch is a huge help in the funding of our projects on this channel. So thank you, seriously, from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate it. Before I continue to do anything today, I have to box these up and get them delivered to the post office. I think I'm gonna need more boxes than that. Yo. This is our new buddy. Packaging for almost two days. Um, now I just have to schedule for Canada Post delivery people to come by the house to pick all of this up. For the rest of the day, I've decided to get myself some much needed vitamin D. Actually, it's been so nice in Calgary. Look at this. All of the snow has melted. And as you can see, my car is out of hibernation. But I'm pushing my luck because it's actually kind of cold out here. Steven has his car out too. Yeah, no, seriously, it's been so nice out and I don't want to jinx it. Some of you guys are probably wondering, hey Birdie, where's the MX-3? Well, I actually let Shane use it for work because most of the time I'm actually just sitting at home doing stuff on my computer, just cooped up in my studio space. So, I mean, I might as well have someone use the MX-3. Shane did used to have his own car. I think it was a Toyota Camry, like one of the old school ones, but a couple of months ago he told me it broke down in the middle of the highway and then he took a taxi home and just left it and never went back for it. He never even called the impound lot to see if his car was there. He just, he just forgot about it. Like, seriously? I don't, I don't know, man. He just, he just never really cared for that car, I guess. It was, it was a beater, but you know, I like to drive in style this winter. That's why I have this thing. Just lucky that I've been able to take my car out. If you look on the roads though, it's still so much gravel. Again, please stay nice for a couple more days or a couple more weeks, even a month, please. Plan for today. I'm just gonna clean up the garage and the store, make it actually look like an inviting space. And maybe I'll stop by Home Depot to pick up some nuts and bolts to actually reinforce my front splitter because I actually don't trust it all that much. All right, day start, go. First of all, let's see if this thing even starts. Mmm, beautiful. We gotta boost this thing. This is why I don't like driving when there's gravel on the road. It just collects all up in here, and sometimes I can't even shut my door. So this area is all fucked up. So if you guys are ever stuck in a rut, uh, whatever that means, or are like me and have a really shitty battery, then I suggest you guys pick yourselves up one of these. It's basically a super portable booster, but it comes with a whole bunch of different heads and it's powerful enough to charge your laptop. All you gotta do, make sure that it's at least four or three bars. Turn it on and then try again. Taking it off, just do it in reverse order. All right, ran inside to grab myself an extra jacket because it's actually pretty nippy outside. Off to the garage. Here, picked up some Wendy's on the way because lately that's all that's been my diet. Let's clean this place up. Still haven't even cleaned up the remnants of my last art video, which you can see on the It's Birdie YouTube channel. I painted a Gundam. So over there, I plan on having a small office studio space. During the Sears closeout sale, we picked up a couple of appliances. We have a mini fridge and a microwave necessities. Shane donated us this couch, but this couch I'm gonna be moving to this side and we're planning on getting a TV and a small entertainment stand so people can play video games here. And then this is gonna be the store, the area where people can come up and shop for merch. Picked up a few retail units 
shoving in is just to display all of our KMR merch. So stickers and some JDM stuff. I'm gonna set you guys up here and we're just gonna go to town. pretty clean up here so I'll do a small walk around for you guys so come up the stairs oh shiz I'll fix that up later and this is a small entertainment section but we don't have a TV yet yo what up yeah that's pretty much it okay Onto car stuff. I'm just gonna reinforce my front splitter with these things. These are actually the same struts that I had on my previous splitter, splitter rods, whatever you guys wanna call them. Bought these particular ones off eBay, and I know in my other video I didn't really show you guys how to install them, so I'm gonna do that now. So the first part of the problem is figuring out exactly how you guys want these positioned. I don't really think there is one specific way that people install these. I've seen people do it straight from their splitter to their grill. People use three of these where one's straight dead in the middle. I think that it actually depends on your front bumper style too. There may be areas and sections of the front bumper that are a little more rigid and more structured and probably a more proper spot for you to actually place these. For me, I'm just gonna copy what I did last time. You might wanna just mock them up first. I'm gonna mark where the holes are and then I'm gonna drill them. Also, maybe some of you guys are wondering what I ended up doing or how I ended up compensating for that small gap. I'm talking about this gap. The gap that's supposed to fit the original front over fenders for the Rock Bunny version 2. I don't have that kit, I have the rally backer. But this is what I ended up doing. I just have this really long screw that is connected from here on the canard to the other side. And then there's these nuts that I'm using as stoppers so that it doesn't really move. It works. And I've done the same on this side, which is actually a lot more sturdier. If I end up hitting something with my front splitter, then my entire front section is done for. Everything is connected with each other. Now that I have that mocked up, I'm gonna take my front bumper off, and then we can get to installing the nuts and then reinforcing everything else underneath the front splitter. Just in case, you know, just so it doesn't fall off on me on the highway. So when I said everything in my front end was attached, I meant absolutely everything. This is the farthest I can take my front bumper away without ripping off any of the wiring. All of the daylight running lights that come with the Rocket Bunny kit are all wired in, so you're limited on how far you can take the front bumper off. Just screwing in the wing nut. I've actually went ahead and I've replaced all of the self-tapper screws with actual bolts and nuts. Once I reinstall the front bumper, maybe I can also use this opportunity to finally do a small walk around for you guys to show you exactly what components, what car parts I used in the making of this project. I know that's something a lot of you guys have been waiting for, so let's just, let's do this. Here you go. I don't think this is going anywhere anytime soon. So, car is prettied up a little bit. The moment you all have been waiting for, we are gonna be doing a small walk around with my car. I'm just gonna quickly clean up this corner area so we can park, park, stance park the car and we can do this walk around proper. To all the fake friends, where are they now? Probably in a party when I pull that fucking Audi out. Homies riding shoddy, draped in Gucci, looking golly. You not, cause your hobby is just sitting on your mama couch. Oh my God, grow up, get a life. Was left. I don't like how this looks on the floor. I think I just short-circuited this extension cord. I just gave up on it. Alright. 
To all the fake friends, where are they now? Probably in a party when I pull that fucking Audi out. Homies riding shoddy, draped in Gucci, looking golly. You not, cause your hobby is just sitting on your mama couch. Huh? Oh my God, grow up, get a life. Was left out too long, it's time to get it right. From girls turning down my calls, now they stay the night. We're just living in the darkness, now I see the light. Whoa. Like I found now I don't have any external microphones for this DSLR. So the sound might actually have a little bit of reverb because this garage space is pretty open. So yeah, bear with me. So what you see behind me is my pride and joy and quite possibly the main reason why I have this channel in the first place. This thing is a 2013 Sound FRS. And I bought it with really low mileage about three years ago. But back then, I had no idea I was even looking for an FRS. It kind of found me in a way. You know? And just to clear things up, I couldn't care less about all of these racer comments that I'm seeing in the comment section. I think people really just need a reason to complain, so I let them. And I mean, sometimes reading these comments over, it does hurt inside, but I'm past that point to even care. At the end of the day, it really doesn't affect me or the direction that I'm headed with this build. Okay, I admit, I'm not all that mechanically inclined, but at least I try my best to push my practice further every day so that I'm better than I was yesterday. I'm here doing something I like and learning through the process of personal experiences and enjoying life's simple pleasures with my friends. Like, doesn't that sound like a good plan? Enough! Chatter, chatter, let us get this walk around started. Where do we begin? I'll take you into the interior. Not all that many interior mods. Let's step into my office. I wish it was a little bit cleaner in here rid of this stuff. So for those of you who are new to the channel, this is a 2013 manual Scion FRS. It came in the factory Raven black color, but I vinyl wrapped it green. So once you get into the car, first thing you might notice is this obnoxious sword handle shift stick. Let me tell you, man, this thing is conversation piece for sure, but it's it's dope. This thing's actually made out of ceramic, so there's decent weight to it. I ended up going with a 13 inch because I actually like how I can throw it into gears. It makes me feel like I'm in an anime. Bong guy. Bong guy. Now you obviously can't see it, but I also have shift springs and a short shifter attached to this sword handle. But we'll get into what mods I've done for the drivetrain in a bit. What else do we got in here? We got this Toyota 86 armrest with the 86 logo embroidered on it. Kind of wish the stitching was green, but it matched the stock seats. Here's a custom KMR centerpiece plaque. It can actually be taken off. When there was a company making these, I got them to custom engrave this KMR logo onto one of them. And now just keep it in the car. We got the custom Kelly Green wrap trim pieces, of course with Okiara, spotted number four from Bleach. Custom black steel floor mats, shed some light on it. I got them to paint the 8.6 logo green. Here you have my steering wheel set up, all greened out. Back there you have the energy short hub adapter. Attached to that you got the green anodized energy quick release. And I've decided to pair it up with this rare 1996 edition green vertex wheel with their type font embroidered on the handle. So dope, vertex. Eight. The interior lights are actually green LEDs. Yo, big shout outs to our friend K. Slammed UK underscore K. Buddy in Japan who gave us this JDM luck charm. Really cool. And I also got this really weird shaped wide angle mirror from Japan. One of my favorite pickups. And then to the left of the steering wheel to read any of my engine or transmission parameters, we have the Tanabe gauges. And these things are pretty dope compared to other gauges because these ones are digital. For the chairs, I recently took out the racing seat to reinstall the old stock ones, which by the way, feel like heaven after one season in those brides. Did that and then I just found these e eBay leather seat covers, which actually don't look all that bad. Comfort wise, so much better than the bride seats. Pretty much it for the interior. Now we get to the bread and butter, the exterior. Now remember guys, I'm a freelance illustrator at heart. It is my main profession. So I heavily respect visual artistry. To me, it's all about visual aesthetic. I'm also a big believer in personalization, the individualization of an object. I push people to follow their vision. Mainly this was just another art project, but after a few years of owning it and meeting all these new car friends and slowly delving into this car community, I fell in love with the automotive car scene and well, here we are. We can start off in the front area. One of the main eye catchers of this thing is the walled hood. Now this is actually a carbon fiber replica. The walled company doesn't actually make it in carbon fiber, but I mean the fitment is pretty good. I've never actually seen any other FRS rocking this hood, so I just had to jump on it. Before this kit was even available in North America, I was one of the first people in Canada to call the manufacturers in Japan, and I had it ordered within like a 
weeks time after the first photo of it was uh, put out on the internet. So I ended up going with a 16 piece rally backer kit, minus the front lip that it comes with. That together with a Rocket Bunny V2 front bumper, comes with the daylight running lights. I've bought two of them off because these two are green LEDs and I've already gotten in trouble by the authorities. So this is my alternative. Custom front splitter that I shaped out of ABS plastic. The Ayoshihara canards that are actually supposed to be meant for the Rocket Bunny V2 kit. But hey, that's what these are for. Just want to give a big shout out to one of my main sponsors, Specky Tuning for the boomerang headlights. I've actually had my eyes on this set for the longest time. So I was super stoked when they actually approached me and they were willing to give me a set or two. I do have an extra set at home, which I'm going to be customizing, but I'll be saving that for another video. Got our way around. We've got the official TRD carbon fiber vent fin. So now we come to one of the main attractions of this car and that's these beastly wheels. Big shout out to another one of my sponsors, Avangard Wheels, for hooking me up with these F221s in this custom gloss Kelly green finish. This is actually such a sick color in person. Yes, it's seen better days. So the wheels in the front go around and round. So the wheels on the front are actually a different size from the rears. The rally backer fenders in the front bring it out like 50 millimeters and the rears are 75 millimeters. Front wheels are actually 18 by 9.5 with a negative 18 offset. And the rears are 18 by 11 with a negative 36 offset. Like if you're following me or driving behind me on the road, you look at this thing, it looks like a mini tank, man. Like from from this angle, it's just a deep hole of nothingness. Dude, I love it. I'm not the one that ordered these tires. Um, Simon, you guys may know him as Derpy FRS. He's the one that owns that Red Rocket Bunny FRS that you've seen in many of my previous vlogs. He's the one that ordered these. They ended up being close to the fitment that I was looking for, but they're a little more meatier than I had hoped for. Like to make them fit, we actually ended up cutting a lot of the rally backer kit in the front. So for the rear, there's a little bit of stretch. Like I'm not rubbing or anything, so it was actually a good size. Brody, what's your wheel specs? Bro. Front, you got the 18 by 9.5 wrapped in 235 35s Destinos. Shouts. In the rear, you got the 18 by 11 wrapped in beefy 265 with Destinos. Beauty. And then I'm just using these green Mateki lug nuts. Out here, you also got the HSE window visors, model list antenna fin. Car's pretty dirt. This rear window spoiler is also made by HSE. Notice you can actually see straight through my car. There used to be 25% tints on the front windows, but it was an easy reason for cops to pull me over. I did get my windows tinted at one point. I kept the tint on the back and the back window. 20% so I can actually still see at night. No tints in the front because illegal. And so that brings us to our rear section, which I could say has mixed reactions. I don't really see people living happily. They just struggle through the days because they have to eat. And those Start off with this, this obnoxious piece. So this is a GT on GT Wing and it's made by the company Battle Arrow. You got these super rare custom spec D tail lights with a black housing. Doubt you'll find those anywhere else. Spoiler. I'm one of those people rocking two spoilers. If you look really closely, this is a different color from this. Bought this BRZ trunk with the BRZ spoiler still attached to it, and this is still the factory asphalt color, whereas this is raven black. Two different colors. I got this random third brake light, which I bought off eBay, but hey, I think it fits well with these taillights. Also bought this diffuser off eBay, it was only 60 bucks. One of the first simple mods I ever did to this car, which was replace the Scion badges with Toyota emblems. Cheap, you know, just confuse people a little bit more. I mean, on the front you have my logo, people ask, what the hell is that? Now for those of you wondering about my exhaust setup, it's a chimera, it's just a bunch of different parts put together. I'm running the HKS Premium Mega Max exhaust, and the tips on these things are 4.5 inches, so that's massive. So the HKS exhaust is connected to this HKS joint pipe, which is connected to the Tommy front pipe, which is also attached to Tommy unequal length headers, which brings us to the last section of this car walk around the engine bay. So let's open this up for you. Remember, guys, this car is primarily made up of bolt ons and custom arrow pieces. Guess we can start off with the suspension. So in the front we got this GT Spec front strut tower bar. Cars lowered on teen street flex coilovers with a dampening adjustment. I mean just a bunch of random parts really. You have Cusco oil catch can, a master cylinder brace made by radium for your brakes. And some of the things you can't see there is a mission motor performance radiator, intercooler and oil cooler that came with HKS supercharger. So there. This car is boosted, so for all of those people out there who think that this car is all show and no go, respect one's business, don't get your panties in and all. This was always part of the plan. It's just I don't show the engine bay all that much in my videos. But I actually have the installation video of the supercharger in one of my past videos, which I'll probably be putting up here somewhere. There's a stage two clutch kit. The Tommy Unequal Length headers are down there somewhere. I'm running the Buddy Club P1 Lightweight Pulley Kit for this car. You know, just small little things here and there, like for vanity. Throw on this carbon fiber cover for the fuse box. So, supercharger 
people's good times. I mean, it's not anything impressive, but it's definitely a good boost from the original stock 170 wheel horsepower. And I've actually gotten this car tuned already. It's pushing roughly 230 horsepower to the wheels. And that's with the most basic tune with Ultra 94 gas from Petro. So that's pretty much it for this walk around. I'm sure I missed a few things, but I have it all recorded in my build thread on the FT86 forums, which I actually haven't touched in a really long time. I'll update it just for you guys. Oh yeah, how can I forget? Bruh! Lambo doors. That should be okay. Okay, how do I end this? Um, I mean, what can I say? Vancouver streets and just driving back and forth from province to province really did a number on this thing. So during winter, I have a handful of things that really should be taken care of. This build is not completely finished yet. Still a few more parts here and there that I'm waiting on, but really, really close to coming to some sort of end. So thank you guys for lending me your eyes. Cheers for stopping by the channel, and I hope to have more car content for you guys in the near future. See you guys in the next video. See you guys on the next video. Peace. Yeah. This is for the thumbnail. Okay, we home. Home sweet home. I feel like taking a power nap. So I'll see you guys in 10 minutes.